everyone, it's Lori. So in this video, I want to walk you through a way to use the Lens Blur Filter in Photoshop. So if you go to Filter, Blur, there's one called Lens Blur. And there's a step that you need to take using this blur that really is going to help you target the blur and make it um, really beautiful in your images. So you may ask, why would I use Lens Blur over some of the other options? Well. The most common blur people use is this one called Gaussian Blur, and it's really beautiful and does a nice job. But when you're wanting to make selective blur, and you're wanting blur that looks like you used a creative lens, Lens Blur was made just for that. So for this image, for example, I really want to blur the writing on the boats. I want to blur the water so that it looks a little bit softer. And really, I wish I'd been able to capture this with a more creative lens like one of my lens babies or a tilt shift lens. So with the lens blur here in Photoshop, I'm gonna be able to make it look like I used one of those lenses. Because I want it to look natural and like I used a lens versus adding blur in Photoshop, I'm gonna use the lens blur option. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you a couple ways to make this a lot easier. So first thing is we're gonna duplicate our background layer using Command J I'm going to turn off the background so we have that saved in case we need it. Now what we're going to do is a step that you may not be familiar with, but we're going to go to Channels, which is going to show us our red, green, yellow, red, green, blue channels, and we're going to come down to the plus sign, and we're going to actually add what's called an alpha channel. Now I'm not going to explain alpha channel here today, but just know that we need to create that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use our gradient tool to adjust where we want that um, channel. So we're going to add basically a filter. So you can turn back on your main image if you like, but you want to keep this alpha one layer selected. So now I'm going to use the gradient and I'm going to come up and I'm going to undo that because that's the wrong way. So you have to check your gradient at the top depending on the direction of it. So my gradient is white to black, so I'm going to come down to about the top of the boat and I need a little bit more, so I'm going to go down a little bit further. And we're going to keep going. Let's see, I think what I'm going to do is look at my filter here, and I'm going to change it to black to white. And let's go up this way. There we go, that's what I'm wanting. So the gradient is not my favorite tool, but it really does a nice job. So I'm going to go ahead and keep moving this up. There we go. I want it to be really soft at the edge of the boat and then transition down. So let's review that. When you click on the gradient tool, you can come up to this top and under basics you have several options. Um, I, I prefer the one that is dark to light and that lets me know where my mask is. So my mask is going dark to light. So if you don't have that option selected, you can come up here to basics and change that. All right, so now that we've got our mask here, what I'm going to do is we're going to come back over to our layers and let's turn off the alpha one. We don't need that anymore right now. We're going to go over to layers and let's turn back on um, our layer one here. And so we want to make sure it's grayed out. And now what we're going to do is go to filter, blur, lens blur. Now this system with the blur takes a little while to load and you're going to have this menu over here on the right. Now when you first start using this program, it's probably going to say your source is none. And what you want to do is make sure your source is that alpha one channel. So you're going to select that. You want your blur distance to be zero. Um, and the reason for that is we already told it our alpha channel. And we do want to invert it. So we want to make sure you have invert mapped. That is going to put the alpha one channel exactly where we had it. So now we can already see the gorgeous blur and the blur in the water. And it just softly fades, which looks really natural as if we had done that with a special lens. So now at the bottom, you have several options for the shape of your blur. So you can change it. I don't notice a huge difference. Um, I typically use square, but you could try different options. Um, 
pentagon, octagon. Um, I tend to keep it on the square and like that one. Radius is how much of a blur um, or how, how far the blur is going to go. So you can see now the words are blurred a little bit more. So I'm going to bring that back to about 50%, which is a lot more realistic and about where I want it. Blade curvature and rotation, you can increase those. I usually keep them at about 50%. I don't notice a big difference in changing those. Now the fun thing about lens blur is you have this option to add what's called specular highlights. And that would be bokeh highlights in the blur area. And I do like to keep that around 50% and the threshold about 129. Now you can also add just a touch of noise. And what that's gonna do is just make it look a little bit more natural in the water. Now I usually only like to add maybe plus two um, and in some images, I don't add any at all. So you can decide if you want some or not. I like to keep the distribution uniform. You can also flip it to Gaussian. There is a monochromatic option as well, but I like uniform. So just to review the setup that I find works really nice is preview. I do faster so that it's really quick and I can view it. Your source should be that alpha channel. You wanna make sure it's inverted and that your blur focal distance is um, zero because we're not, we're not telling it where to blur, we're letting the alpha channel tell it where to blur. And then iris, I keep everything pretty much in the middle and you can play with that from there. So once you're done, click OK and you're all set. You can turn back on this background layer so we can see the before and there's the after. Now, if you needed to, you could add a mask to this and continue to refine it, but I think it, um, it looks really nice. Now, here's the biggest benefit. Let me um, show you. Down in this water, it's not crunched up. Um, it doesn't, it's not pixelated. It looks like we used a creative lens. And so that's really the beauty of doing it this way versus if we did the Gaussian blur. So I think I have an example. So this one was done using the Gaussian blur. And if you come down the water, you can see it's pixelated, it's got noise, um, and um, that was caused by that Gaussian blur. So I could um, try to remove that noise and work on it, but the um, lens blur did a much better job. So I do um, like using that, and I like using it with those alpha, alpha channels to really make it specific. So let's do one more example together. Let's go over to this image. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by duplicating the layer. So I'm gonna do Command J. And now what I'm gonna do is turn off that background. I'm gonna go to Channels, and I already had an alpha. I'm gonna delete that so I can show you. Okay, so we've got our channels here. We're gonna come down to the plus and add the alpha channel. Now I'm gonna turn that RGB on just so I can see it. Now this time, I wanna work with the center of the image and I really wanna customize it. So I'm gonna grab my black brush, make sure that it's on white, about 60% opacity, and I'm gonna just start brushing the area that I do not want blurred. So I'm just coming around, getting that all cleaned up and ready to go. So that area looks pretty good. So now that we've got that selected, all right, I'm gonna turn off the alpha channel. I'm gonna go back to my layers and I'm gonna just make sure, sometimes it comes up pink like that, I'm gonna make sure it's grayed out. So be sure you get it grayed. Then I'm gonna go to filter, blur, lens blur, and it always remembers your last settings. So, um, We've got these settings here. It's on the alpha one. Now for this, it looks like I may need to flip it and take off the invert. So you have to play with that invert depending on where your mask is. Now that's bringing the detail out in this area. So we need to keep the invert on, but our flower is a little bit blurry. So I'm gonna bring down the blur radius until I get that flower back in detail. There we go. And let's make sure our source, it is our alpha one. And 
I'm going to come around with that and now I'm going to click OK. And let's go back over to our channels and come back to our layers. So in this instance, we still got some blur even using that alpha channel. So what I'm going to do is add my mask, and, and it's probably because I was at 60%. So I'm actually going to take this up to 90%, and I'm just going to flip it to a black brush, and I'm just going to remove it a little bit more off the flower. So probably for this image, when I was over here at the alpha, I should have used 100% or 90% so that I got it all removed. But hopefully it still gives you a nice idea of how to work with it. And then you can com continue to um, really customize. So if I want to bring some of that blur back, I could take my brush back down to 20%, grab a white brush, and maybe add a little bit of that blur back around the edges just to make sure it really um, blends might even take it up to 50% and just add a little bit of that blur um, around the edge here. Okay, so now I'll show you the before. We had all that background and now it's just softly blurred. And if you wanted to change the opacity, you could. So we could bring that down just a little bit. I think I even like that better. So you've just got a hint of that background, but it's enhancing our image versus distracting. So you can use the Lens Blur filter without the um, channel alpha, but the alpha setting is going to allow you to really customize it from the start, and I think it works really nice. So it's a great option for um, working with this in particular blur. All right, I hope you have fun trying Lens Blur and using it as an alternative when you want to create something um, a little bit different with your images.